Normal First Trimester Pregnancy for Sonographers. The ultrasound will continue to be for much longer the diagnosis mechanism for excellence on pregnant patient care. The most important characteristic of ultrasound are safety and low cost. Ultrasound has limitation in the diagnosis of anatomical abnormalities in the first trimester of pregnancy, but with the advancement in the quality of ultrasound machine and the development of new research, every day the ultrasound is presented as a medium more sensitive in the diagnosis of first trimester pregnancy disease. The ultrasound during the first trimester of pregnancy should be handled with considerable caution. A medical decision that may be taken only with ultrasonographic evidence should be reviewed with other studies of accuracy of ultrasound during the first period of pregnancy. The fetal period begins at week 10. The last two weeks of the first trimester of pregnancy are better to distinguish anatomical structure and possible pathologies than during the embryonic period. The head of the fetus during the first two weeks of the fetal stage is very large and its size is similar to the size of the rest of the body. With the development of the fetus during the second and third trimester, growth in the body is faster and head no longer appears so big. As we say before, the last two weeks of the first trimester of pregnancy is the best time to see more anatomical structure and possible pathologies, so it is logical to recognize however the diagnostic potential of ultrasound during the first trimester of pregnancy that still do not get the same level of accuracy and efficiency than the same ultrasound in the later stage of the pregnancy. Sonographers use gestational age or menstrual age for calculation. Gestational age and menstrual age was calculated from the first day of the last menstrual period, in other words, from the first day of the menstrual cycle. The embryonic age, however, begins with fertilization and is not easy to determine. The embryonic age is used in medical or veterinary research. Remember that we use gestational age to calculate the age of the embryo or fetus. To calculate the embryonic age, you must subtract two weak gestational age, but also this may be a question in a ultrasound examination in hospital practice never use embryonic age. In a woman who menstruates regularly, ovulation should occur at the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. But many women do not menstruate regularly and it is difficult then calculate the exact day that ovulation will occur. Once the ovulation is produced, the egg enters the fallopian tube to meet with the male gamete in the outer third of the tube. The egg, unlike the sperm, does not have a medium of locomotion, so it has to be absorbed by the fimbria of the tube and placed in the ampulla. Two days after ovulation, fertilization happens, usually in a tube part called the ampulla. As it is logical to understand, 
all these parts of the pregnancy occur in a microscopic scale and ultrasound is unable to detect anything. Usually only one follicle ruptured during ovulation. That follicle then becomes the corpus luteum that in addition to maintaining the production of estrogenic hormone begin to produce another hormone called progesterone. When the luteinizanting hormone increase, ovulation occur and the corpus luteum produce two ovarian hormones, estrogen and progesterone, that characterize the secretory period during the menstrual cycle. Immediately after fertilization, appear a living organism with two cells called zygote, which in the fallopian tube evolves into a structure of 16 cell called morula. The fallopian tubes are covered on the inside by a ciliated epithelium that moves the product into the uterine cavity. Trophoblastic cells, which are the cells that will give rise to the placenta and the membrane of the pregnancy, begin to produce a hormone called chorionic gonadotropin, which act in the same way that luteinizing hormone, maintaining the corpus luteum, producing hormones to maintain the pregnancy. The blastocyte which is the continuation of the development of the morula, is a hollow structure and inside is called chorionic cavity. The blastocyst enter the uterus and make contact with the endometrial tissue, which is in the secretory stage ready to maintain the pregnancy. After 12 days of fertilization, implantation happen. It is the process by the blastocyst is introduced into the maternal endometrium. The process of implantation of the blastocyst in the maternal endometrium is mediated by the proteolytic enzyme that allow the product introduction to a deeper level where it starts to take place the exchange of nutrients from the mother's blood. At this time is that it begins the development of the future placenta when performing the exchange of nutrients from the blood of the mother to the product. At this stage is where there are multiple extensions around the concept called villi. This is the principal reason why some women are wrong when asked about the first day of her last menstrual period. But this little bleeding can never last much nor produce as much secretion as a true menstruation and patient usually remember it was a short menstruation. As I say at the beginning of the formation of the placenta, the primary villi are distributed around the product. Then when the definitive placenta is formed, only part of the membrane of the concept are contiguous to the placenta. The future embryo will develop from an internal structure of the concept called bilaminar disc, and that is between the two internal cavities, the yolk sac and the amniotic sac.
The yolk sac is a very primitive structure in living organisms and is present also in the eggs of birds. Acts as a reservoir of nutrients and also contributes to the future embryo tissue. Remember, if you see with ultrasound the yolk sac, this should be a secondary yolk sac because the primary yolk sac cannot be seen with ultrasound. The secondary yolk sac should be seen with ultrasound through the first trimester of pregnancy. It is an important anatomical structure of the concept and should always be measured. The other cavity, the amniotic cavity, grows. The yolk sac and chorionic cavity disappear. The fetus is in the amniotic cavity, batted by amniotic fluid that surrounds him. As we said before, the embryonic stage ends at 10 weeks, during the first trimester of pregnancy, and fetal stage begins extending through the second and third trimester of pregnancy until birth. This is the reason why drug or toxin can be more teratogenic when affect pregnancy in this early stage. It must be remembered that medication used throughout pregnancy should be safe, but is even more important at this stage. The first organ that is recognized on ultrasound in pregnancy is the heart and its pulsations. It is said that if you can identify the embryo, you have to count the bit of this heart. For safety reasons, we recommend using the end mode, not the Doppler. At this stage, the embryo change shape and begin to form organ and some ultrasound recognizable anatomical structures such as umbilical cord and upper and lower limbs. Ultrasound and laboratory examination are important in the medical management of early pregnancy. The sonographer must understand the values and significance of the concentration of human gonadotropic hormone and know how to relate them with the information obtained through ultrasound. When pregnancy is very recent and still not be detected with ultrasound, gonadotropic hormone concentration is the only information that you have. When embryo is already visible, with ultrasound, then hormone concentration allow to the dog a medical prognosis of the pregnancy. Concentration of the mother gonadotropic hormone is directly related to gestational age until 10 weeks, when it's established a plateau and the hormone concentration is no more useful. The knowledge of this relation is very important in the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. The diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy is achieved through information obtained with ultrasound and laboratory tests, especially the concentration of human chorionic gonadotropic in the blood of the mother. A 10 week pregnancy should be a show in the image and should measure approximately 45 millimeters in diameter. This is a very important rule that a normal gestational sac can be consistently demonstrated when the hormone levels is over 
1,800 units. Endovaginal examination is a very important part of the medical care during the first trimester of pregnancy. Moreover, in the case of emergencies such as ectopic pregnancy or hemorrhagic abortion, where is the cornerstone of the diagnosis? Through endovaginal examination, you can determine the presence of pregnancy with concentration of hormones as low as 500 units. This statement is very important. If we have high values of gonadotropic hormone, then where is the gestational sac? In a condition like this, it is essential sign of an ectopic pregnancy. The comparison between ultrasonographic finding and gonadotropic hormone levels are key to the diagnosis problem in the first 10 weeks of pregnancy. A large number of diagnoses such as molar pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy, threatened abortion also can be performed with ultrasound information and gonadotropic hormone concentration. As is logical, gonadotropic hormone concentrations are decreased when the pregnancy is not viable. That way you can diagnose and appropriate treat many patients with early pregnancy complications. When the concept is not evolving properly and a loss of the embryo is expected, a fall of the gonadotropic hormone concentration is confirmative. It is of clinical importance of establishing a correlation between the concentration of gonadotropic hormone with other findings, including, of course, ultrasound. The imaging show one of the first endovaginal transducers that were produced. It is remarkable the great development that endovaginal transducers have had since that time. Endovaginal protocol is one important part in the health care of the female genital organ with pregnancy or without pregnancy. All endovaginal study must be preceded by a transabdominal pelvic study. The reason the transabdominal is better to appreciate the relation between the different organs of the pelvis and the endovaginal produce a better quality close-up pictures. This study is also called translabial ultrasound. Involves placing the transducer in the region of the female vulva in order to obtain very accurate images of the cervix and also not all sonographer and doctor are in agreement is an alternative to the study endovaginal as in the case of cervical cerclage. It seems logical to retain the rule of using the Doppler as little as possible during the first trimester of pregnancy. The routine ultrasound examination during the first trimester of pregnancy should be the transabdominal examination, receiving endovaginal study for emergencies or difficult patients as are obese pregnant. The uterus and annex are the primary and essential part of these studies. The crown round length and the mean sac diameter must be measured. The documentation of cardiac activity using M mode is imperative. Twin pregnancies are easy detected with sonographic studies of pregnancy during the first trimester. Information can also be obtained in order 
to establish what kind of twins is present. One of the most important anatomical structures that must be evaluated is the sac of Douglas, located between the rear wall of the uterus and the anterior wall of the colon. IUP means intrauterine pregnancy. Example, normal IUP means a normal pregnancy inside the uterus. In the ultrasound imaging, you can be see clearly the characteristic of a gestational sac of five weeks with ultrasound. Note the anechoic center because it is liquid and the double echogenic ring that characterizes him. The anechoic center represents the chorionic cavity. The fetus is going to develop in the amniotic cavity. The chorionic cavity is going to disappear when the amniotic cavity grows enough. The inside of the double ring represents fetal tissue and the outside the endometrium in contact with the product. As we say at the beginning, the primitive placent surround the product. The part of the double ring which brings the mother is outward and is called decidua basalis and is highly vascular to provide nourishment to the concept. The part of the double ring that provides the product is called decidua capsularis. In the sonographic imaging, you can easily recognize what is stated in the text of the slide. The gestational sac is seen with ultrasound as a round or oval structure that is anechoic and is surrounded by two rings separated by a hypoechoic line. Here you have the enlarged image to see in more detail sonographic characteristic of a gestational sac. The normal sonographic features of a gestational sac include a round or oval shape, a fundal position in the uterus, or an eccentric placed position in the middle portion of the uterus, a smooth contours, a decidual wall thickness greater than 3 millimeters. When the implantation of the gestational sac is very low, maybe some pathology is present. Please note that the jaw sac should be able to identify with ultrasound if the gestational sac measures more than 12 millimeters. The embryonic pole should be detected in an ultrasound when sac diameter is more than 80 millimeters. The system that is used to calculate the diameter is the average of three measurements taken in orthogonal plane and is called mean sac diameter. From the time the gestational sac can be detected with ultrasound, growth is rapid and can be verified by measuring normal development at daily intervals. The gestational sac should grow 1 mm each day. The yolk sac is often the first observed anatomical structure within the gestational sac and should be measured. Sonographic feature of a normal gestational sac 1. Shape, round or oval 2. Position, fundal or middle portion of the uterus a center position relative to endometrium 
Double Decidual Sack o Intra Decidual Finding. Contour, Smooth, Four Wall, Trophoblastic Reaction, Ecogenic, Five, Internal Landmarks, Jol Sack present when gestational sac is more than 12 mm. Embryo present when gestational sac is more than 18 mm. Grow 1 mm each day. When the gestational sac is coming at 6 weeks, the amniotic cavity and amniotic membrane also should be distinguished. Your sac visualization with ultrasound predict in 90% of the case a normal intrauterine pregnancy. When you cannot see the your sac in a gestational sac with a diameter greater than 12 mm, it has to be suspected an abnormality. If a gestational sac is more than 20 mm and lacks of a visible yolk sac, it's almost certainly there is an abnormal pregnancy. In the ultrasound image, you may notice that the yolk sac is too big. This is not normal when a yolk sac occupies over 20% of the area of the chorionic cavity. Multiple pregnancies are easy to detect with ultrasound and the number of yolk sacs allow us to determine the type of twin pregnancy. In the case of a twin pregnancy where there is only a yolk sac is the identical type and fetus share a single amniotic cavity. These are the most dangerous twin pregnancies. In the case of a twin pregnancy where there are two yolk sac, it is possible that the type is fraternal or identical. Identical twins always have more risk of complication than fraternal twins. Approximately at 12 weeks, the yolk sac is not more detected by ultrasound. But some patients remain with pregnancy where the yolk sac persists without that indicate any pathological association. Now back to the bilaminar disc, the structure formed by two layers at the beginning of the five week at a third layer. The three layers are called the ectoderm that give rise to the skin and nervous system, mesoderm, which give rise to the muscle, bone, blood, and endoderm that form the gastrointestinal tract. Because now is when the formation of the organ begin is the time where toxin can exert more teratogen effects. Doctors should be cautious with medication and pregnancy but at this stage, more cautious. It's common among sonographers say, if you find an embryonic pole, you have to measure the number of beats of his head. Often that is done during a transvaginal ultrasound using a mode. When an embryo or fetus is large enough To measure the crown round length, hair rate can also be measured. In some cases, it can detect the hair beating, but it is still difficult to measure the crown round length. Chorionic cavity disappear when the amniotic membrane fuses with the chorionic membrane. That occurs at about 15 weeks of pregnancy. When the bilaminar disc adds a third layer, 
the embryo change shape and is bent into a letter C. This occurs at the beginning of the sixth week. During this process, the dorsal part of the jaw sac, which is in contact with the mesoderm, is called endoderm and gives rise to most of the organ of the digestive tract. For this time, you can distinguish the spine with ultrasound. The nervous system goes through a complicated process to develop that begin in six weeks and end to mature after birth. A seven week is seen with ultrasound as a single large vesicle. The prosencephalon, which is the forebrain, will become the cerebral hemisphere and the thalamus. The mesencephalon will be the midbrain and the rhomboencephalon or heat brain, the pons and cerebellum. In the picture you can see that a cyst is in one of the choroid plexus. Choroid cysts may be associated with several congenital pathologies. The Down syndrome is one of them. The anechoic areas are the lateral ventricles filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Choroid plexus are inside the lateral ventricles and are more echogenic. In a six-week pregnancy, it is not possible to detect the definitive lower or higher members yet. Normally, a 10 week of gestational age can clearly distinguish the extremity with ultrasound, as the skeletal system has begun to calcify. This process is normal and important, and not always easy to observe. This process is complete when the bowel returns into the abdominal cavity. The function of this process is to rotate the intestines on its axis. The development of the fetal bowel outside the abdominal cavity but in a peritoneal sac is called omphalocele. Gastroschisis is when the fetal bowel is free in the amniotic cavity. The first to do when you are scanning a pregnancy is to localize the hair beating. And if you successfully locate the hair beating, you must measure it with an mouth. Embryonic hair development is a very interesting and complex process. An ultrasound can diagnose several cardiac disease. The sensitivity and specificity of ultrasound for the diagnosis of fetal cardiac anomalies is better in the second and third trimester of the pregnancy. The hair at week 8 has his final form. Detect the hair beating in the first trimester pregnancy is in general easy. The hair rate of the embryo or of the fetus varies with the gestational age. Fetal cardiac frequencies less than 90 beats per minute should alert of possible distress or wrongly be taken hair rate of the mother. The measures taken during the first trimester for the calculation of gestational age are very accurate. 
the measurement of the gestational sac in the first trimester are quite accurate and are best when taken on average of three measurements. This is called mean sac diameter. The gestational sac size remains accurate through the first eight weeks of the pregnancy. As can be seen in the two sonographic image, measure the gestational sac in three perpendicular planes and take the average to calculate the gestational age. Remember, only must be measured the anechoic area, not the external double ring. That was the time of the Vietnam War. The vaginal transducer allowed measuring the crown row length even at five weeks pregnant. Crown row length is accurate until 12 weeks of pregnancy, where the diameter of the gestational sac is considered appropriate to just eight weeks of pregnancy. Ultrasound pictures are taken of the heart as early as the five weeks, but medical decisions that can be taken from these studies are still very limited. Ultrasound to determine fetal malformation during the first quarter is still limited, and the benefits of this type of study should be still better evaluated. More studies of ultrasound and its benefits during the first trimester of pregnancy should be made yet. It is absurd to make a study of amniotic fluid or placenta in any pregnant woman because the risks are much greater than the possibility of detecting fetal disease. Nuchal translucency screening or NT screening is an ultrasound test. It screens for Down syndrome and other disorders that are caused by extra copies of chromosomes, as well as congenital hair defects. Ultrasound advances in the diagnosis of new disease every day, but also at the same time new studies are being developed to detect biochemical and minimal invasive manner congenital disorders. These are tests that require more time than a normal ultrasound exam to obtain the degree of certainty required to establish a diagnosis as important as trisomy 21. As is logical, should be corroborated then with another laboratory studies. The area of genetic research, apart from its extraordinary potential and development, has multiple ethical and legal questions which, in the course of new discoveries and application, will emerge. The discovery of multiple pregnancies is something common and usually easy with ultrasound. The risk is increased in multiple pregnancy, but not all types of multiple pregnancy have the same risk. The monozygotic twin pregnancy has a higher risk than the zygotic twin pregnancies. The imaging show a monozygotic and monochorionic pregnancy, which is the highest risk twin pregnancy. The most important parameter to determine the relative risk of a multiple pregnancy are chorionicity and 
amnionicity in twin pregnancies. Twin pregnancy with less risk are called fraternal twin pregnancies. The fraternal twin pregnancies always have two placentas and two amniotic sacs because they are the result of the union of two different pairs of gametes. Fraternal or identical twin pregnancy can be diamniotic. When using the term monochorionic, establish the presence of a single placenta. This determines the risk of blood transfusion between fetus and worse prognosis than twin pregnancy with two placentas. These are the risks of twin pregnancy because the risk of fusion between fetus. And as is logical to sing, have a high likelihood of a stillbirth. The absence of a diamniotic membrane and the presence of a single jaw sac diagnose a monochorionic and monoamniotic twin pregnancy. <laughs>